North Carolina State has done a phenomenal job under Dave Doran of really being an underdog in the ACC. And when you're looking at a team to surprise people, it feels like the Wolfpack have a chance to do that this year. Now, it might not be a huge surprise, but I think that everybody's expecting the Miamis, the Clemsons of the world to be at the top of the ACC. But when you look at the starters they have returning, there's 17 starters returning. It kind of reminds me of, was it 2017 when Bradley Chubb was running the show on defense? They kind of had a similar situation where they had a lot of starters returning, including a very talented defense. It feels like this is kind of a similar situation. You know, Ryan Finley was running the show at quarterback, so they have a, uh, an experienced quarterback, a talented defense. I think that hopefully things end a little bit differently this time. Uh, maybe a little bit better because that was a year I think they finished nine and four, but you're looking at a team that has the potential to not only win the ACC, but make a huge statement in the process. Losing Peyton Wilson last year was a huge blow to this NC state defense. You're looking at a veteran player who in 2020 had 108 tackles, 11 and a half tackles for loss, the leader of that defense. He goes down on top of another player who we'll talk about in a little bit. That's a huge blow to this to this defense. And you're looking at hit, getting him back. That's, that's someone that can really turn things around. That gives you a higher ceiling because you don't have younger players filling in. Now, the nice thing about him getting hurt, if you want to look for a silver lining, is – his injury allowed younger players to step up and play. That gives them a little bit more depth of the linebacker position. So when he has to go out, or if he does get hurt again, it's not a huge shock to those players to have to step up. And I think that this defense is going to be super talented regardless of who's leading the show. And it's just a matter of staying healthy for guys like Wilson and really that front seven. Flipping real quick to the offensive side of the ball, Devin Leary is a name that's gaining a lot of steam in the offseason. You look at what he did last year, nearly completed 66% of his passes, over 3,400 yards with 35 touchdowns. I think I saw a stat that he was the only player to have the 35 touchdown, five interception stat line ever, maybe. Uh, but I, I look at a player like him is going to play a huge role. You look at what Ryan Finley did for that team back in 2017. Devin Leary is going to be that player this year. Now, if he can really pr produce at the same level or even step it up even more, that's really exciting for NC State. There's some things they have to get figured out at the skill positions, specifically at running back, but some of the pass catchers also. If Devin Leary is going to take a step forward, he needs those guys to step up. But I like the direction that this program is headed. I like the direction the offense is headed because they have a quarterback like Devin Leary running the show. Now, flipping back over to the defensive side of the ball, Drake Thomas was really presented with a challenge last year because Peyton Wilson got hurt. And we'll talk about the guy in Isaiah Moore next, who also got hurt. Drake Thomas was forced to be the leader of the defense, and he took that in stride. 99 tackles, 13 and a half tackles for loss, six sacks, three interceptions. He did a little bit of everything for this defense and provided them with a third elite option at linebacker. This is one of the best units in the entire country. The ACC, actually, if you put their, their different units together, Clemson's defensive line, NC State's linebackers, I don't know who would be in the secondary, but... That front seven, if you combine Clemson and North Carolina State, that's a tough unit to be for anybody in any other conference. These linebackers are super good. Drake Thomas proved that he can be a reliable starter. He can be a, He's now an experienced player, more so than he was last year, and that's really exciting for this defense that already has a talent, ton of talent. We just mentioned Isaiah Moore. I think he's the sleeper pick of the three because he was really good two years ago and obviously he played a little bit longer than Wilson did but he also got hurt which forced Thomas to be the leader of that group he's back and if those guys can stay healthy this is going to be a dangerous group we talked about the talent they have their their experience and honestly there's like I said not a better group of linebackers in the entire country it just comes down to whether or not they can stay on the field Corey Durden trans transferred in from Florida State, and he honestly gets kind of overlooked because of those linebackers, but he is a first-team all-ACC type defensive tackle. And you look at his production last year, four and a half tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, nothing crazy, but he demands 
plenty of attention for any opposing offense. He is going to command double teams. He is going to open things up for the linebackers behind them. And the reason why they'll have so much production is because guys like Durden are getting openings for them. They're taking double teams, which means that there's one last guy to block the guys behind him. And that's huge for this defense. Tanner Ingle is yet another multi-year starter on the defensive side of the ball. He is, he's a leader in the secondary at safety, does a little bit of everything. You kind of can use him all around the field, which is really nice. And like I said, his experience is huge, especially if someone in front of him goes down. It's something that they can utilize when necessary. And he, like I said, he can keep everybody going. And the experience on the, the the secondary is something that you really love having if you're NC State because you know that you're getting someone who's experienced. He knows what teams are going to run against them. He can get his guys in position. And honestly, you can never have too much depth at the secondary. And Tanner Ingle is very good. He All ACC type player, another guy. We're going to say that a lot of all of these guys, really everybody on this list. But having one on the backside is going to be huge for this defense as well. Thayer Thomas is a name that I think could blow up a little bit more this year. You look at what he's done over the last couple of years, specifically last year, his route running is something that I think is going to get noticed a lot more when we're talking about the NFL draft in 2023. 596 yards, eight touchdowns. He's going to be a weapon in the slot, really dangerous slot player. I, I really like what he can do in this offense. And if he and Leary take a step forward in terms of their chemistry, you know, you look at they lose some talent in terms of pass catchers, and a guy like Thayer Thomas returning is huge, and I think he's going to have a big year. Leary also gets Grant Gibson back at center, one of the best centers in the entire country, returns, a very experienced player, one that I'm really excited to watch play again in 2022. And it's a huge the quarterback center returning is something we don't talk about enough because that's a chemistry that you really need to have and if you're a team like nc state who's looking to surprise some people and maybe win the conference if you don't have everything going right at the snap you're kind of in trouble and fortunately for the wolf pack they have that going and grant gibson is going to be a leader for that group and be able to spring free the new running backs that are running the show and get Devin Leary time to throw the ball down the field. Joining Tanner Ingle in the secondary is Derek Pitts Jr. I, I like him just as much as I like Ingle. I think that he is a weapon they like to utilize all over the field, maybe a little bit less than Ingle, but now he has an, a year, another year of experience under his belt, and he has an idea of what to expect in the ACC. And the, the, you cannot get enough of this defense. There's so much talent. And it's, it's just going to be so much fun to watch them. They're going to shut a lot of teams down. They're going to make life very difficult for anybody that they're facing. And Derek Pitts is probably set to have a big year because people are going to focus on the names above him. We talked about Corey Durden, but Savion Jackson, I think, has the potential to ha be a breakout player, be the breakout player for NC State's defense. Because, like I said, linebackers are going to get a lot of attention. Corey Durden is going to command a lot of attention. That opens things up for Savion Jackson. Now his production was 23 tackles, one and a half tackles for loss. Nothing crazy, but I think that he's going to have a chance to get a lot of more one-on-one -on -one matchups, which allows him to work in space a little bit more because teams are focuses, focused elsewhere. They're not worrying about him because they don't have to, maybe they don't have the resources for it, but or maybe they also think they don't really have to worry about him, but he is a guy that I think could be a breakout player for this defense. There's so many other options you could put on this list, and that's what makes NC State so exciting. This is a talented defense that is going to be one of the best in the entire country. You have a quarterback in Leary that can be big time, and an NC State team that is looking to take a step forward, maybe even surprise the ACC. I love what Dave Doran is doing, and if it's anything like what we saw years ago when the Chubb was in, in there and whatnot and Ryan Finley was there, this could be a very exciting team, and if they're able to take a step forward and, like I said, surprise some teams, we're going to have a team that we're going to talk about for a long time.